So welcome, Professor Chang. Yeah. Okay, good afternoon, everyone. I'm Yi Chengyang from Wuhan University. It's a great honor to be here to have some discussion with you guys. And today, my topic is recent advance on COVID-19. As we know, you all face the information overload every day. Actually, information thinking happens for everyone, every day, or is everywhere. So actually, a practical system used to identify a few of relevant items from a tremendous number of items of, of available items for both searching recommendation and task for a So to achieve this, uh, to achieve the faster response, we open uh, split the system into two parts. And first, uh, we need to identify the, the relevant candidates uh, for a larger item pool, right? So, in this step, uh, we, can, we can name this stage as tidal matching, uh, which is also our focus today. Uh, some other names can also be uh, uh, used for the same thing, for example, tidal zero, tidal deliberation. So afterwards, a uh, ranking model is used to uh, uh, rank the hundreds of items and these high gates as a list, and the pattern of them are displayed to the user. So let's look back to the matching stage here. Uh, the item pool will uh, contain up to billions of items. Uh, and the first four signals we can use include user history, uh, the context information. The uh, key requirement uh, is to direct the low latency since uh, we need to run the reductive uh, high date later with more fire rate uh, model. So far, uh, so for the ranking stage, uh, given that a few of just uh, a few of high dates to be ranked, we can also import another side information in, uh, to enhance the performance. Uh, of course, we can still use the side information for the matching stage as we have to ensure the low, uh, the low computation cost. So in the right side, uh, as to the model uh, matching, a uh, simple architecture like two tower structure is often used. For mm. the comparison, uh, the detection-based learning, uh, which are more powerful as the express, can, uh, are used uh, for the uh, ranking stage. So in many uh, uh, commercial system, actually we have many user contacts and uh, sad information. So these features are really uh, uh, valuable for the babies, since even the driver is the housewife cannot take bread without uh, the flower, right? So in the past few years, uh, many efforts are made for uh, the matching stage. Here we sort out the, the missed words along the timeline. Uh, so before uh, 2013, uh, uh, people use item-based uh, CF to achieve the purpose. Then after that, uh, deep learning categories are increasing to rise the risk we call them patterns retrieval. In earlier, in earlier years, most of what focus on yeah, deriving better uh, for robust representations for a query item and the user. A typical uh, structure is the two-tower structure. Uh, very recently, people attempted to import the uh, interaction based uh, learning uh, to further enhance the uh, representation learning process. So, in the next, uh, I will skim the dominating uh, elements in each of these three lines and uh, further show more details on the later two. So, here we go. 
goes to the admin based CF, we can utilize uh, the Pearson co correlation to measure the core constraints between the items. And uh, the similar items to the history item of a user will be uh, retrieved for the matches, uh, for the ranking stage. Uh, after that, uh, when people started to derive the latent vector to present a user or item work. And uh, uh, by using uh, match factorization uh, editors. Then in the age of deep learning, people firstly uh, choose big linear networks uh, as the encoder to uh, for, for query item and user for the, uh, the uh, representation learning. The representative uh, solutions are to use DLN uh, transformer or, and, or performing multi entry construction. Then uh, more expressed models, you will see a tension mechanism are proposed with the key idea actually is to highlight the relevant signals and uh, uh, kick off the direct information for enhancement. However, uh, this kind of uh, interaction-based learning involves more computation codes, which is not desired for the magic phase, and we will discuss this issue soon after. Okay. For the presentation learning based solutions, there are two types of uh, representative uh, methods. The first is to uh, concatenate, uh, concatenate all possible features of a single vector, and we just fit it into a state uh, MFC network for, for, for scoring. Uh, these networks and architectures are uh, simple uh, since uh, computation parallelization and the speed up can be easily implemented. Also, the, uh, in the right side, we show another uh, representative uh, structure, namely two tower structure. We can use two different uh, encoder uh, to uh, present the uh, query and document. And on top of it, we just uh, score the relevant score in terms of inner products. After that, uh, people realized that encoding uh, the semantics of query item or user into a single vector is insufficient since uh, each entity could contain several aspects, interesting or something. And this is also the nature of our world, right? So each person may take different uh, uh, opinions towards the fantasy. Uh, therefore, the researchers that the two is tried a multiple interest directors for a user, or multiple uh, aspect directors for both story and the document. Then a uh, future uh, network is applied to derive the final presentation and the manual the corresponding uh, relevance. Also, the graph union networks are found to be uh, more powerful in capturing uh, the high order correlations between the different entities. These uh, many efforts are also uh, uh, devoted to the model of the things of the graph. Uh, the representative works include the graph stage and the NTCD. Uh, they aggregate the visual representations from the label food and the propagate the features along the, uh, the graph structure. Uh, for example, analytics uh, 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 was then proposed to simplify the uh, graph convolution process. Uh, by removing the nonlinear function. Uh, afterwards, uh, many efforts follow just follow this slide to reduce the computation cost. Then at the top, they also use inner products to for relevance uh, calculation. So these models uh, can be real trade offline and uh, also support low latency uh, with AN algorithm. Uh, recently, we combined DLN and uh, multi interest learning together. Uh, you can actually you can use graph convolution aggregation to verify the user preference for different networks. Also, uh, different interests are extracted by performing historical item uh, classery. So these two uh, perspectives can complement each other for better matching. Uh, specifically, at the first we build a count. Complete graph for each user by collecting each uh, historical items with the other ones. Then we uh, uh, divide the graph structure by using a new network, and we perform graph convolution over this graph, st graph structure. In this way, the the presentation uh, the representation 
Rock position to the right to in each layer reflects the usual properties at different level uh, at the specific level. So for those uh, a proper rock position, we utilize capture network to generate uh, the multiple interest for each layer uh, or, or for each level. Then the usual property score is then calculated in terms of inner products. And the last, we use a mass spooning uh, over the different levels to obtain the final score. Also, as we all know, the items can be classified uh, into four items and the uh, non-pair ones. It is uh, hard to generate robust representations for the non-pair ones uh, since they have less support in the training data, right, in the training set. So, for example, so it's close bias makes the data distribution very different, uh, very different or very unbiased. We can we consider the representation learning for for the items as a long term items as a domain alignment uh, problem. The for the items form can form uh, uh, the for the items can form a first domain and the uh, long term items form a target domain. The domains uh, shift could be easily. Uh, happens since the representations of long tail items are less optimized since they have less support in the, in the training set. So one simple way is to evoke some the evoke the long tail items more frequently in the model training process. Here we introduce uh, three unsupervised uh, regularization objectives between what items and the uh, long tail items. For example, the product value uh, is supposedly correlated to the uh, with the item price, right? But the product value has no correlation uh, with the material visual. So, firstly, we can capture this phenomenon by measuring the uh, correlation coefficient across the visual dimensions, uh, because uh, both the source domain and target domain should have the same uh, same. Uh, Correlation coefficient. In this way, the presentation of long tail items are updated uh, supervisedly uh, with the uh, similar to each other uh, in one session. So we can just align the corresponding representations uh, more tightly by making them closer. And last, we choose to use self training to label the unexposed items and use entropy regularization to get the representation learning process. Also, uh, some people choose to enhance the representation learning process by exploiting the auxiliary knowledge. For example, we can mix items with the attributes uh, through the knowledge graph. One of our collaboration, one of our projects with Taobao is to improve sharing recommendation in their platform. The users in Taobao EP can share items and the service to their friends. Uh, we can consider this task as a user-to-user -user, uh, recommendation. Actually, there are hundreds of scenarios in Taobao EP. Uh, some of them are no resource ones for letting the uh, long tail uh, uh, non pair scenarios. We find that many scenarios are shared almost uh, symmetric to some degree and they can be uh, organized uh, periodically. So, this diagram uh, just uh, illustrates the relation with the tree structure. Or, let's example, for example, <coughs> the make up scenario is located from uh, C2C to CRA to entity to products, then we get the uh, make up scenario. First, we can uh, establish the knowledge sharing between different scenarios under the MMOE, MMOE structure. To, to sum up, uh, we can see that most existing works focused on these four aspects in representation learning uh, based on uh, tight data matching. Another line of research is to perform uh, interaction based uh, learning for uh, target matching. The key is to utilize the target item to gather the user representative 
a representation learning process, such as the features uh, relevant to a type item can be highlighted and needed to more precise user uh, understanding. A representative work uh, in this slide is DIN, which generates the importance of each user historical behavior uh, based on uh, attention mechanism. However, this strategy, strategy can only be applied to massive states since the completion cost could be very high when we uh, derive the importance weights which for us is paid the item. However, we still have some rooms to perform interaction based learning. For example, we can perform interaction based learning just within the user side. Here is an example. One of our work is to utilize the user profile to derive the importance of each user behavior. Then we can encode the user properties more precisely. Of course, the same treatment can be utilized for the item side. Our work published in SkyUp 2021 uh, to, to perform visual interaction for each item pair. Uh, this uh, helps generate more uh, accurate item to item relevance estimation. Then we can uh, just uh, follow item based CF to achieve the, uh, the paid matching. Uh, very recently, if, uh, so right now, it just seems as we only perform interaction based learning within a single side, either the user side, the query side, or on the other side, the document side, or item side. So in Brixton, uh, in the last year of Brixton, uh, there was a solution as enable attention across the two sides jointly. They use a uh, alternative aggregation network to abstract the, the hidden features from the document side. Then, and then they inject the miss uh, features into the query side and uh, they use a uh, uh, partial attention intelligence to uh, to explore this uh, to uh, to enable the interaction learning. The results show that the proposed this proposed solution can obtain significant performance gain with small completion cost for the inference stage or for the matching stage. So to sum up, uh, we can see that no latency uh, requirements uh, given the development of interaction based learning for matching stage. Then, uh, I will share some visual uh, towards the future choice for data data matching. So in the current uh, uh, current business world, uh, more scenarios are developed to facilitate uh, facilitate uh, facilitate the user experience. For example, in Alipay, we can use category search, uh, issuer search, uh, trade search, item search, and more. Also, we may need to optimize different uh, tasks like CTR, CBR, or something, uh, something uh, more. So developing an individual model for each CAD slide or task is very expensive, and it will require a lot of uh, uh, exporter knowledge. And we ask for knowledge sharing and uh, cross scenarios uh, for better performance. So currently, most of relevant works are resort to using MMOE structure. For example, we can utilize MMOE to model multi uh, scenario learning for the same task and uh, 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 vice versa. So we take course for a flexible frame framework to model both these two uh, needs. So uh, one of our work uh, last the year we uh, in one of our work in last year we introduced a theoretical MMOE structure to accommodate uh, the this emerging need. Uh, this theoretical structure uh, designed to enable us to flexibly establish the inherent connection between different scenarios and uh, and uh, support also support the the high level visual extraction for different tasks. Here yeah, we we we, uh, we devise a export selection mechanism to automatically identify scenario specific and the task specific for shared uh, exports for each input instance. It is end to end uh, and can reach low maintenance uh, mater uh, 
maintenance cost across different business Also, the automatic network structure learning process in Python can, can help us to avoid fancy uh, the exercise knowledge. For example, to optimize the network structure manually in CLE. Okay, uh, another possible trend is to enable the real interaction based learning for matching stage across the two sides. For example, given different queries, we can see uh, that's the relevant features in the item set could, uh, uh, could be very different, right? So utilize attention mechanism is a straightforward idea. However, the uh, interaction across two encoders are effective but expensive. So can we uh, transfer the capacity of interaction-based learning for the inference phase or inference stage? A simple idea is to a simple idea for us is to uh, perform interaction-based learning for model training stage. And then we just uh, remove the interaction components, uh, components for inference stage. And we hope to return the powerful uh, expressive, expressive uh, ability then during the training stage. Then the uh, problem is transformed to how to design a proper copying mechanic to support effective representative learning and the uh, also support easy decoping uh, afterwards for inference state. Here you choose to encode the query and item in a attribute aware manner. The, the shared uh, first encoder is used to derive the representations for both query and item respectively. For the item, we can obtain the representative of the corresponding attributes. Then for model training, uh, model training, we introduce a local, a local uh, matching uh, score by considering each query attribute uh, relevance to a tension mechanism. Uh, and last, uh, both global and local matching scores are optimized uh, with, with a best contrastive learning scheme. So we can see us. Uh, with this, this interaction based learning in the training stage, the most relevant attributes are more diverse uh, than uh, the result you see. And this opens a new avenue for, for the matching stage. Actually, this one can be seen as a new study point for tidal matching research. Uh, this simple idea could uh, uh, foster many ways to, for better representative learning. Uh, last, uh, allow me to say something more about our talent recruitment. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Wuhan University uh, has the most uh, beautiful campus in China. Yes. And uh, right now we have uh, one of the positions in every level. Uh, if you are interested, please yes. joke. The email, okay. So, <laughs> so here is the conclusion of my talk, which is the present uh, info overview towards the current progress on high data matching. So, in this talk, no latency is the in this talk, no latency is is the top priority. Uh, up to achieve both effectiveness and efficiency at the same time. Also, we give some possible future tricks at the last. Hope some of you can join us. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, uh, any questions? Please. Uh, hello, uh, hello, Professor Lee. Uh, nice to meet you again. Uh, thanks for your valuable and very informative summary. So I have a question about by uh, considering the what I mentioned the candidate matching problem in the foundation. Problem. So they are basically encoder and decoder. So nowadays the encoder is become more and more 
dedicated the different parts, and but the decoders look very simple. Like most of work is a uh, uh, product dot prediction. And uh, why uh, do you have any suggestion about that? And uh, do you have any idea why? Uh, what made this happen? And also, I have another question. It's uh, relevant with this one. So in the encoder, so nowadays, as you mentioned, the, the graph neural network is become more and more complicated, more and more complex. So, uh, how can the the GNN become more like uh, with the low latency, as you said, because the gene is very it is very heavy, right? Okay, that's a good question. So actually, uh, we if we get uh many papers every year, right? So some of the papers are from the uh, from universities that do not have the real theories about what the company really care about, so what do they really have. So they just pick some uh best practice as uh, you know, uh devise some algorithm and partly run the experiments and see some uh, some better scores and better paper published. But but in real uh, in, in the commercial systems in the real world. We have us uh, uh, hundreds or even thousands of features, and uh, we have uh, millions of users. So, uh, if we want to use CLN, we can just uh, try a GLN, uh, use a GLN, uh, uh, encoder to to get the initial user user representation or item position. And this representation is just what's one kind of feature for the whole system. So you can calculate uh, this derive this representation is all black. Right? It's good to 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 get this representation so in my you know my way. So that's that's is the my answer. So for the first question, what is the decoder? I didn't see any I didn't see any encoder in my slides. Uh, yeah, yeah, but uh, but, but but as you uh, present all the model like this, uh, a lot of model in the scene hour. Mm -hmm. So in the in the very uh, top top part, I assume it's a decoder part. It is a uh, dot prediction. Um, okay, okay just, we just use inner product CCT can be uh, very very efficient to optimize for faster uh, response. Okay. Okay. Another question. <laughs> 